Oj, ju. Kan det här se? Hello and welcome to Just One More Submariner Homage. I thought I'd get in before you did. This channel has always focused on the value end of the watch market. And at this end of the watch market, there are a lot of watches, and I mean a lot of watches, that look like expensive watches, but have a different name on the dial. Homages, clomages, facsimiles, copies, call them what you will, they are very, very popular, and popular for a good reason. Not everybody can afford the ridiculous prices that Rolex are charging these days for a Submariner, and even if you want one, good luck, because you've got to join a queue that can be a couple of years long. One of my most popular ever videos is Rolex versus homages. I took a Submariner and compared it to a whole bunch of different homages, from $50 right up to $1,000 US dollars. That day, the winner for me anyway was the Phoebus PY007 at $300 at 299. I felt that that hit a real sweet spot in terms of the quality, in terms of the design, and in terms of the price you paid. Phoebus, in their infinite wisdom, have deleted that as they move towards more original watches. So I think there's been a real gap in the market for that $300 Rolex homage that's well built and well specced. I think the Kronos on my wrist today has filled that gap. Now, to be clear, this watch was sent to me by Kronos. I do not have to send it back. This video is therefore sponsored by them. It's currently on sale on the AliExpress 1111 Singles Day Extravaganza for just over $300. Regular price on these ones is going to be around $330 something. Now, I reckon for that money, you are getting quite a lot of watch, especially considering I've got the Solita 200 powered version. That's a $200 movement in a $300 watch. If you're okay with a lack of originality, you should have a serious look at this one. Let's flip the camera and do just that. This has been a week filled with both homage watches and delicious ironies. On Sunday, it was the Bure Field Watch, a Chinese homage of a Chinese watch, surely a world first. Yesterday, it was the Pagani No Time To Die Seamaster, a homage of a James Bond watch we've yet to see James Bond wear because the film keeps getting delayed. Today, it's the Kronos, undoubtedly the best homage of a six-digit Rolex Submariner that I've seen, just as Rolex changed the dimensions of the six-digit Submariner. I don't think even Alanis Morissette could cope with this level of irony. But the watch, I must say, is really, really good. For $300, watches like this do rather make a mockery of the nine grand Rolex are charging for the sub. Proper, stamped and dated two-year warranty, little screwdriver for the screw links, and enough spare links, I reckon, for an eight-inch plus wrist. So thank you, Kronos, for sending me this watch for free, but thank you for sending me old stock. I got the one with the high-polished mid-links. Everything they're selling from now on has got an all-brushed bracelet, which is how it should be, because that's what the Rolex Submariner has. If you're going to do a Rolex Submariner clomage, you want to get it as close as possible to the original subject, and they really have. This is definitely the best one I've seen so far. I've reviewed Steinhardt's, I've reviewed Squale's. This is better than both of them. Those, I feel I'm in a reasonable position to make that call. It is not the most interesting watch in the world. They do black, they do green, they do blue, they do a carbon dial one. It's not supposed to be the most interesting watch in the world. It is supposed to be as close as it can get to the Rolex Submariner without having the brand name on the dial and without having the 9,000 US dollar price tag. So that means you can therefore almost recite this set of dimensions along with me. Just over 40 millimeters in diameter, I measure it at 40.4, 13.3 mil thick, 47 lug to lug, 20 mil lug width, so it does have the old style 20 mil lugs, tapering down to 15 and a half, back up to 18 and a half at the clasp, sized up for me, 7 inch wrist, it weighs in at exactly 150 grams. So if you're going to do it, do it properly, and they've done it properly. 316L stainless steel throughout, case crown, bezel, and bracelet. The bezel action is really, really good, and it's got that high-pitched click, very much like the Rolex Submariner. 120 click, unidirectional, no back play, no bounce, everything, when I get it lined up, does indeed line up very nicely. 
The case is finished exactly how you'd expect it to be, i.e. high polish on the side and brushing on the upper lugs. We've got crown guards. Kronos branded screw down crown with their stylized hourglass logo. Very nice finishing on the bezel. No sharp edges there. It's nice and smooth to the touch. It's a high quality ceramic insert and it's been recessed nicely and you can see a piece of flat sapphire crystal just with a little beveled edge there and a correctly placed cyclops. The bracelet I've got on mine is much more akin to the GMT Master 2 because of those high polished mid lengths, so I'm glad they've moved to all brushed because the Rolex Submariner doesn't have the high polished mid lengths. They scuff and they scratch too readily in my opinion anyway. The outer edges, if that's anything to go by, it is a nice smooth brush. They're solid oyster style three piece links and screw links as you can see. Now the clasp definitely looks like it belongs to the Rolex family, but they haven't gone for the easy link system. They haven't done a glide lock. There's no on the fly adjustment. You do get those three recesses there. So effectively that is three levels of micro adjust. You should still get a decent fit, even though there are no half links. It's just full links and those three holes to adjust. The case back is screw on and sterile, just like a Rolex Submariner. Now you do need a special tool for these, for Rolex and for Tudor. I mean, you can buy them relatively economically on eBay. I bought a set not so long ago for myself for this style of watch. Not as convenient as a two pronger or a three pronger though, but very much in keeping with the watch that they are mimicking. Same goes for the dial, it's not particularly interesting, but then again, it's not supposed to be. Applied indexes in the classic pattern, triangle at 12, batons at six and nine, circles everywhere else, and a printed minute track. Kronos logo and branding there, I'm glad that they changed that kind of outdated font to something a little bit more neutral. It's still not particularly exciting, but it's better than the old one. And automatic, 200 meters, 660 feet printed above the index at six. One decision that they have taken that I'm not particularly fond of is they've put a white frame around the date complication at three o'clock. Haven't seen that elsewhere. Rolex don't do it and I don't think it adds anything to the Kronos. But everything's nicely done and there is a bag of loom on the hands, the indexes and the loom pip. I mean, seriously, a bag of loom. I'm guessing it's BGW9 or certainly something that mimics that bright blue look, which in turn mimics the chroma light that Rolex use on their watches. Right to the end of my 20 minute test period, this thing is still very, very legible. That is a good result from the loom, the sign of a well-made watch. Now this watch is available with a choice of movements. You can get it with a PT5000, which is a Chinese made clone of the Eta 2824, or the Salita 200, which is a Swiss made clone of the Eta 2824 and far more of a known quantity. I would be paying the extra 100 for the Salita. This one's running okay, plus 11 seconds a day. You'd be hoping for a couple of seconds sharper than that, but not too bad. And you get that high beat 28,800 vibrations per hour, the smooth sweep of a second hand, again, just like the Rolex Submariner. And it wears just like a Rolex Submariner, specifically the Submariner with the super case with lugs that are slightly too wide for their own good. But hey, it hasn't stopped the sub selling in massive numbers over the last decade. Legibility is excellent, especially if you go for the black one as opposed to the blue and green. Those white hands and indices really do pop off that dial nicely. Now outside, Kronos claim there is a bit of anti-reflective coating on the underside of that sapphire crystal, which is something you don't actually get with a Rolex. All that money and they don't even bother putting AR on their sports models. On wrist, you can see it wears just like you'd expect it to. Those slightly wide lugs, I guess some people are into that look or have got used to that look over the last decade. Some people prefer the slimmer lugs of the older five digit models. And here it is in a homage sandwich, and you can see what I mean about the lugs. The Laurio on the right here has not adopted the fat lugs. They stuck with the older case shape. The Guan Chin on the left has gone for those fat lugs, but I think they're even fatter on the Kronos. It reminds me even more of the original sub. I did say I had three minor moans though, didn't I? Well, the branding, the brand name, the brand logo is better, but it's still not fantastic. And it would have been nice if they'd done something on the foldover clasp. It does look a bit sterile. Even the much cheaper, if not nearly as nicely finished Guan Chin, at least manages to slap the letter G on the foldover. And then there's that weird white frame around the date. 
I'm not sure why they did it. Guan Chin don't do it. Lorio don't do it. I've never seen anyone else do it and I don't know why Kronos did it. It just doesn't need it. It's totally unnecessary. Maybe the dial looked better uncased. Maybe when it was sitting on a workbench with that frame around it, it looked balanced. But inside the watch, it just looks a bit odd, I'm afraid. But if you're into this style of watch and you want to go a bit more upmarket than the other watches that I've compared this one to today, I think the Kronos more than justifies the extra cost. Everything about it is really sharp. It's nicely done. It feels solid. Swiss movement, just over $300. Great loom. This one does tick an awful lot of boxes, if not the box marked originality. So there you have it, the homage manufacturers have finally cracked that big lug six digit Submariner just in time for Rolex to release a new model. I wonder how long it will take for the homage manufacturers to add one millimeter. This is a seriously nice watch, no real weak points, great bezel action, good loom, nice bracelet, everything works well and it's got a Salita 200 in the back of it for a smidge over 300 bucks. Tissel Marine Diver is another obvious choice for around 230, but that has got a Miyota 9000. I reckon if you can pick this one up on sale or using a couple of coupons and so on and get it down to $300 and you're into this style of watch, you want a kind of everyday wear and you don't mind the Rolex look, it's a winner. Thanks for watching. I will see you soon.